anxiety, can't relax, can't turn off. Nobody f***ing talks about it, and so you do think something's wrong with you. When I thought it wasn't normal, that was when it really felt bad. Got to be ready for it. Three weeks. Yeah. Bunch of wife beaters. <laughs> Am I ready? No, my eyelash is falling off. Oh, Trimsky? Yeah, dude. You're looking fresh. GQ. my favorite soda, it was like Diet Sunkiss. We get on, I was like, amazing, my favorite soda. I was like, where's the bathroom? And they were like, there is no bathroom. <laughs> the whole thing was filled with fluids. Just if like, you really need it, we have a bucket. And I was like. Bro, like this doesn't feel proper. <laughs> I wish I had my seatbelt on. <laughs> She's a pack a day chewer. Let's see how many ounces this is. That's because I get nervous. <laughs> I think 20 pieces a day or 16 a day is a super conservative estimate. It's one it, mini no. pack. No, okay, listen, there's it's circumstantial stress. Then you're always circumstantially more. stressed. All right, so we're gonna say 1.68 per day times 365 days is 613. Times seven would be 4,300 ounces divided by 16 is pounds. You would be 268 pounds of gum if it lasted seven years. We just debunked it. <laughs> you go back and forth. She literally just zigzags around me. I, She's like, walk fast. I was like, you just walk around me. Just keep doing yeah, a little lap. And then it works. I just go, okay. We just yeah. keep talking and I'm just walking like this. They've done studies on this. If you can just move more, walking, moving, fidgeting, etc., you actually burn that's more so calories hard. than everybody. I've gone on a walk every day for the last 3,650 days. Just walk. After walk. Just watch for gators. <laughs> what? What? Did, Did you hear that? that? What the fuck what? is that? That's, that's fucking totally a fucking gator. Oh yeah, yeah. That's totally a, a gator. Where's this dude? It's right there. I mean, it could be a, a turtle. Oh, that would be lame. Like real calf, not knee calf. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I usually get up like two hours before Alex. And then he wakes up. Sometimes I don't know he's up and I just hear his phone. And he watches cartoons or like comedy in there. And then other times he texts me and he's like, hi. I'm like, hi, do you want coffee? And then he's like, yeah. And then he doesn't come out for like an hour. <laughs> it is a little different because we're traveling. Like normally, my computer's just sitting out there and I have coffee and I open my computer immediately. But I did kind of like tell the team that I wanted to not worry about stuff when I was traveling, which was more for me, not them. I mean, there's just kind of like the shittiness of like, I just fired somebody who's like a key person. I knew that was gonna suck, but I had to do it anyways. And then, like three days later, somebody else on the team told me they're retiring, who was the second key person. <laughs> I think it's more like impending doom. <laughs> Part of me doesn't like me and Alex being involved in most of the portfolio negotiations because I feel like it's unfair. Us from social media, and him specifically, they come into the conversation, it's like they'll just agree to anything in that conversation. And then afterwards, then they're like, actually, this is how I really feel. Normally I'd be like doing emails and stuff right now, but I don't feel like it today. <laughs> I think some of the only time that I'm like good at unplugging is when we travel. I used to feel guilty for that, trying to do everything. It's almost like a watered down version of yourself for all the things you're trying to do. What's the day look? Probably walk. Normally I would do it on the treadmill, but I would, it's so nice out. Gym, do calls, have a dinner later. I'm gonna go grab my laptop because he's awake. Do you want coffee? Yes. Alex likes a double shot of espresso. What are you gonna do today? Either bang out a presentation with slides or I will not do that. So, here's you. My brain's starting to work. 
I don't know if any hotel gym is gonna beat the gyms that I go to. I like seeing people and people saying hi and stuff, but on a consistent basis, it's a little inconvenient when people like, can't take a picture and you're like, Yeah, true coach. So my guy Mike programs my workouts and I like log them in here. So I can like go in and see what I did. There's resistance on the concentric and the eccentric equally. So it's like really hard. I usually hate this equipment. They're so hard. I like it though. I've got staggered stance RDL and band pull throughs, which I bring bands, so that's fine. Put your feet like at a 15 degree angle, and it actually gets more actual glute than feel like this, which is like abductors. Coming back from the gym. You got a cookie? I gotta figure out the mood for dinner tonight. I just took myself off a shit ton of meetings, so my schedule is a lot lighter than it was. Would it be beneficial to be on them? Sure. But is the team gonna learn? No, I think I'm just stifling them. They're absolutely capable. Like, I think the only hard thing for me about delegation, like I absolutely do it. There's like always a weird gap before you take on the next load of work. And it's like that gap is tough for me because I like being really busy. I just like doing stuff and talking to people. I think my job is like constantly just solving whatever the problem is. Whatever the constraint of the business is where I should be focused. And right now, I think the constraint is efficiency of sorting through our deal flow. Like the situation we have at acquisition.com is unique because so many private equity firms, they can't get deal flow worth shit. And then they have to pay other firms to get deal flow. Our deal flow is all like, we would like to work with acquisition.com. To take on the same practices that other firms do makes no fucking sense for us because we have an obscene amount of deal flow. Oh shit, it's a Michelin star restaurant. So after the calls that you guys saw, went on a walk. And then now we're at dinner. It was kind of a weird day because we're traveling. I got locked out of Google for like seven hours. So that was interesting. My Google is just like frozen. It's literally just not letting me in. So we'll just have dinner now and then uh, do it. If you think about it, there's results and experience. And a lot of times people are so focused on the results, they forget about the experience that people want. And that's what builds community. We had a community in Gym Launch, and now we're able to start creating a community with content. I think that the same things exist there. It's like there's a charismatic leader, there's a reason that you're doing the thing, and then there's an opposing force, right, that you stand against. I think where most people mess up is that they have a business that they produce results with, but they forget why they even do it. They don't talk about the reason that the business even exists, and then you just blur with the rest of the people in the marketplace. People won't stay in a community if they're not positively reinforced to do so by other members of the community. People won't stay in a business that they're not positively reinforced by all their peers in the business. You have to create an environment in which not just the boss reinforces you to stay there, but your peers are reinforcing you to stay there because they're also doing the same thing. Positive reinforcement. It works even when you know it's happening. <laughs> Supermodel. Hey, Layla's the boss that you want and the boss you want to be. She's the one who's always personally growing and forcing you to grow, even if it's uncomfortable, challenging your ideas and beliefs and helping you actually fulfill your potential because she gives a shit. So please welcome the host of my favorite podcast, Build with Layla Hormozy. make a gym work, you can fucking make any business work. Like the same stuff that we teach you guys at Gym Launch is the same stuff that I use to build Gym Launch, to build Allen, to build Prestige Labs, to build acquisition.com. If you actually live and die by the values that you set with the organization, it's where everything else stems from. They are the root beliefs that the organization operates from. If you lead with values, you can get people to adhere 
to 99% of what you need them to. So say speed is king is your value. Do I need to have a set of rules that says clock in every day by 8 a.m. sharp, respond every teammate within 120 seconds? Instead of saying all those rules, you set the one thing, which is the value. <laughs> Recognition. <laughs> That's probably one of my favorite keynotes that you get. Really? Mm -hmm. So it's just you and me on stage. That's what we just do on here. The old tag team, the old dynamic duo. Oh, okay. We're trying to find these superstars to work for us, but they're never going to believe in the company as much as we do because they're not the owners. So how do we create that culture to make them believe? Do we have to know them or do we find them? And if they love it so much, it's going to stop them from being eventually just leading and starting to know I think there's a couple of ways that you can look at this when it's like, how do I create superstars? I think that you become that superstar and then you attract them. If I look at our ability to attract talent, it just continues to get easier because we get better. Until you are at a point where you are an anomaly, you will not attract people who are anomalies. It doesn't matter what you compensate them. It doesn't matter what you say, because people who are different can feel when the person leading the entire organization is different. I mean, me and Alex have always believed from day one, if we wanted to get people who were the most talented, the most loyal, who actually believed what we believed, that we needed to be the strongest, like most potent source of that on the team because it only gets weaker from there. And to assume that people are going to believe more than you is, it's just not gonna happen. Can they believe as much as you? Like, does anyone believe in achieving, like landing on Mars more than Elon Musk? You know what I mean? You're only going to get like right below. You need to be able to build a vision so big that they can fit their vision for themselves inside of it. And if you're not able to build that vision, it's hard to attract those people. How do I know who to hire, what to hire, and as far as offloading certain tasks that I do on a day-to-day basis to make sure I get a high return on things that I should be busy. There's things you hate, things that you love, things that you suck at, and things that you're good at. Finding the things that you hate and suck at, I start there with people because usually if you hate doing it, you're not doing a good job of it. When someone asks us like, what do we do with our time? I think a lot of times we glaze over certain things that are actually sucking up a ton of time just because of the cost of change between tasks. Some of you are doing things like maybe still writing workouts for the gym and doing, and you're like, listen, I only do it on Sundays for like two hours and then uh, fucking teach somebody else to do it. Where I've seen people go wrong is that they offload something that they are good at but don't like too soon. So they're like really sick of doing sales. And so then they offload sales and then conversion drops dramatically. If you're going to offload something, the one thing that I just like to say you need to be prepared for, whatever you're doing, expect it to be 30 or 40% less as effective when you offload it. And if the business can't sustain that, maybe you need to keep doing it until you have somebody who's trained up where when they step in, they can maintain that. Does that make sense? Do like an hour. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do that. We'll do an hour. Right, you guys are amazing, and I love I your videos. What was your, you know, the biggest journey for you when you went? Because you just had a trajectory. What was the one thing that really kept you focused on that? On just the top. I don't think it was focused on the top as, as much as it was fear of the bottom. Everyone's like, you got to feel good, and like oh, everyone's right. always been like, you've got to see the future and like really see the vision of it. I'm like, oh, fuck that. I saw the shitty version of myself that I didn't want to be. Right. And I was so terrified of continuing down that hole. Yeah. That was what motivated me to keep going. It's really like, what would your life look like if you continue doing what you're doing? And I was like, look pretty fucking yeah, shitty. Shitty. Yeah. Shitty. Yeah. shitty. Like, I don't want to be there. Right. And so it was, honestly, it was more fear for a long time. That's motivating me in a weird way. Like, I that's totally fine be, and I normal. I don't want to be mediocre. I don't want to be there. It's really hard to fathom a yeah. place that you haven't been. We wanted to ask because we talk about the reward. What about, about the punishment? punishment? What about punishment? <laughs> yeah. I think most people think of punishment. They think of, I'm gonna tell someone why they did something wrong. There's a consequence, right? Most of the times what people don't do is create a situation in which they are having to self-monitor with a system so that they are talking about how much they're progressing. If that person's self-monitoring 
and not identifying that they're not doing well, then you intercept that. But you don't come to them and say you're doing a shitty job. You come to them and you state the facts. Stating facts that are contrary to what they committed to. Over the last 30 days, you have only closed at 40% and when you came on, we said the expectation was to close at 65%. Mm. What do you think of that? Feel bad does not equate to change in behavior. If someone feels bad, they may change behavior in the moment and for a short period of time. But if someone feels good, they can change behavior for the long term. I just want to say first of all how inspiring you've been for me. So right now I'm managing three restaurants right now and I'm oh, the only shit. female. So it's Wow, that's badass. Yeah. <laughs> Him and I, so this is my fiance, and we're kind of going into business together. I'm gonna to transition into fitness. Yeah. I feel like I'm overqualified and underappreciated where I'm at. You can manage a hundred people in three restaurants. You can fucking manage a gym, that's for sure. Thinking that I will do kind of more of the operation side. Sales and the marketing. It's like I got that all day when it comes to future planning and organizing events. I like, like I'm getting stressed out and she's like, I fucking love this stuff. Honestly the first thing is most people get wrong is they don't have complementary skill sets, you guys do. That makes sense. And if that's something that you can both do and both be excited about, then I don't see why not. The difficulty that's always gonna come across is how do you give each other feedback in the workplace and not let it affect how you are outside of the workplace? In the beginning, it was like hard for us to communicate when we were working together. One, we didn't show it in front of the team. If we weren't on the same page, it was like, we're not gonna let the team know that. They yeah. deserve for us to be united every time we come in front of anybody. The friction is good. And when you guys kind of argue and get at each other in the workplace, that's good. That's what's needed to make a great company. But at home, you gotta forget about it. We don't need to be that version. We put wife hat and husband hat on when we go home. Yeah. And that's how me and are. We don't act the same at home at all as we do when we're working together. You're welcome. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Keep it up. Hey guys, congratulations. Thank you. It was kind of a weird day because we're traveling. Probably gonna do another day where we're like at home and you guys can see more of like what it's like when we're in our spot as the most efficient version of myself and 